House will come to order. The clerk will read the captions to a group of privileged resolutions. These first two resolutions are invitation resolutions. They're being read for the first time today and referred to the Committee on Rules. A resolution commending Dr. Mitzi Biggers and inviting her to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Resolution by Representative Waits, the 60th, commending the Forest Park Teen Council and inviting its members to be recognized by the House of Representatives. Following resolutions are privileged resolutions being read for the first time today for adoption. A resolution by Representative Hatfield, 177, recognizing and commending the Georgia Association Chiefs Police 2011-2012 Chief of the Year, Anthony Tanner. Resolution by Representative Coleman, 97th, recognizing and commending Brendan Label. Resolution by Representative Lindsay, the 54th, commending the March of Dimes, recognizing March 5th, 2012, as March of Dimes Day at the Capitol. <coughs> Resolution by Representative Holt, 112, recognizing February 29th, 2012, as Georgia Academy of Audiology Day at the Capitol. Resolution by Representative Brooks, 63rd, recognizing and commending Mr. Larry Stone on the occasion of his retirement. Resolution by Representative Spencer, the 180th, commending James Sparks, Camden County High School's 2012 star teacher. Resolution by Representative Spencer, 180th, commending Matthew. Liddell, Camden County High School's 2012 star student. Resolution by Representative Purcell, 159, commending American Bikers Active Toward Education, recognizing February 29, 2012, Bikers Day at the Capitol and for other purposes. Resolution by Representative Watson, 163rd, honoring the life and memory, Stuart Frederick Sly, Jr. A resolution by Representative Waits, the 60th, recognizing and commending Mrs. Sharonda Wright. Resolution representing Waits, the 60th, recognizing and commending Mrs. Zena Age. Resolution representing Waits of the 60th, recognizing and commending Mrs. Verdalia Turner. Resolution representing Waits, the 60th, recognizing and commending Master Sergeant Angela Drew. Resolution representing Dickey of the 136th, on the life and memory of Albert Phillips Reichert. Resolution by Representative Dickey of the 136th on the life and memory of Elizabeth Walton Bowen Chunk Reichert. A resolution by Representative Waits of the 60th recognizing and commending Mr. Charles, Matthew Charles Cardinale. A resolution by Representative Henry of the 67th recognizing and commending Mr. Leonard Santangelo. A resolution by, by Representative Henry. Hill 21st, commending the Civil Air Patrol for their service to the citizens of Georgia, recognizing March 7, 2012, Civil Air Patrol Day at the Capitol. Resolution by Representative Abdul Salam of the 74th, honoring the life and memory of the Honorable Riverdale City Councilman Wayne Franklin Hall. A resolution by Representative Abdul Salam of the 74th, recognizing and commending Chief Samuel F. Patterson. Resolution by Representative Abdul Salam of the 74th, honoring and commending Irma Braswell Battle. A resolution by Representative Abdul Salam of the 74th, recognizing and commending Jesse Gorey. A resolution by Representative Spencer of the 180th, commending the Camden County High School wrestling team on their Class 5A state championship. A resolution by Representative Dickey of the 136th, Honoring and celebrating the 21st birthday of Margie Martin Dickey. Resolution by Representative Dickey, the 136th, commending Shelby Giles, Crawford County High School's 2012 star student, through the privilege resolutions. We're back on the rules calendar. Is there objection? Chair, here's none. The resolutions are adopted. We're back on the rules calendar. The chair, uh, the uh, clerk will read the caption to House Bill 692. House Bill 692, by Representative Mitchell of the 88th, a bill of entitled act, been entitled 20, relating to elementary and secondary education, to provide for the automatic decrease in the salary of a teacher 
or other certificated professional personnel for uh, any salary increase or bonus provided based in whole or in part on results of standardized test scores which were falsified or known or caused to be falsified by the teacher or professional. Bill has been for the House Committee on Education. The committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Bill's being read for the third time. Chair recognizes Representative Mitchell to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I bring before the House, House Bill 692, which simply put, just requires the return of any bonus or incentive pay that was uh, acquired by any professional educational teacher who received the bonus as a result of standardized test achievement. This just affects the bonus uh, that they received for any standardized test achievement, which they later admit to or is found guilty of falsifying. Uh, this does not affect any due process rights that are currently enjoyed by this class of employees. It does not uh, it give them any additional rights either. Uh, Madam Speaker, if there are no questions, I'll yield. There is a question. Chair recognizes Representative Williams of the 89th for a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Would the gentleman yield? I will. What is the statute for if a person have cast a check? Is there a statute of limitation on that? Uh, They've spent the check. So then what? The, the board, local boards of education would now have the ability to go after them for that bonus. Much like any other bill, uh, Representative Williams. Chair recognizes Representative Taylor of the 173rd for a question. Will the gentleman yield? Certainly. Does this have any effect on their employment? Wouldn't they lose their job, or will this have any effect on it at all? Uh, this bill does not address those issues. That's up to the local school boards. That Certainly those, those could be grounds for losing their jobs. Uh, there's a, a few school systems that are undergoing those kinds of proceedings as we speak. But there is present no mechanism to return the bonuses that they received for achievement on standardized test scores uh, if they have falsified them. So well, conceivably under present law, they could lose their job but still keep the bonus. Okay, thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Spencer for a question. Does my sweet mate yield? I, I yield. Um, would this be a policy better considered by the local school boards and personnel there, rather well, than having this codify into law? Uh, the local school boards have, uh, some of them have requested this. Chair recognizes Representative Benton for a question. Will the gentleman yield? I, 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 I yield. Is it not true that your legislation, if enacted, would take place only after due process has taken place? That is absolutely correct. This will not disturb the due process rights that this class of employees presently enjoy. Chair recognizes Representative Bruce for a question. Will the gentleman yield? I, I yield. I'm assuming that if they're caught and proven to have cheated, that they would be, they would lose their job. They'd be unemployed. Is that an accurate statement? I, I don't know how to answer that, uh, Representative Bruce. Uh, it could be very well. Those are some of the options that they have. I mean, logically, they would lose their job if they caught cheating. Uh, and, I, if, I, and if that is the case, and they can't pay back the money that they got, what is the consequence for not paying the money back? Uh, it would be the same as there would be any other bill or debt that you would owe. Okay, they've been dismissed. Right. They owe the money based on this bill. They don't have a job. What is the consequence if they don't pay the money back? Uh, they would be the same, you know, it would be as if they did not pay their visa bill. Same consequence. Uh, there, there's many other options that, that would be available uh, to them. You know, the, uh, it could be garnished. They could uh, just be a debt, liens. Uh, the, you know, the, the 
professional there, big Arnie, in, in a situation where they could pay the bill. Of course, there are remedies for them to having to, to, to pay the bill if, in fact, they legitimately cannot. The law provides uh, uh, for those instances. This does not disturb any of those instances. Madam Chair, with that, uh, I'm going to yield and uh, respectfully uh, ask for your favorable approval of House Bill 692. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 140, the nays were two. The bill, having received the requisite constitu constitutional majority, is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 1146. House Bill 1146, Burbs and McCall of the 30th, a bill of entitled Act Men, Titles 34, Titles 49, Georgia Code of Annotated Relating to Labor and Industrial Relations, Social Services, respectively, so as to create the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Services Board. To be entitled 30 relating to Georgia industry for the blind, so transfer direction, supervision of those industries to the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency, proper property, reserve funds of the industry, proper compensation of workers in the industries to specifically reserve certain laws and amend other various provisions of the Code of Georgia annotated, so as to conform cross-related references. Bill had been for the House Committee on Human Relations and Aging. The committee recommends that this bill do pass. It's being read today for the third time. Chair recognizes Representative McCall to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, House Bill 1146 uh, does pretty much just one thing. It's uh, been discussed, cussed and discussed uh, for the last couple of weeks. There's been... Uh, three different meetings of the Human Relations and Aging Committee. And what it does is it basically moves uh, the Division of Rehabilitation Services of the Department of Labor into its own standalone agency called the Georgia Vocational Rehabilitation Agency. And if you want to look in the bill, I'm going to run through real quick. On page 3, line 89, it talks about the board makeup. The board will be made up of nine members, five of which, which is about 60% of the board, will be made up of people with disabilities or family members of people with disabilities. On page four, if you look down about 122, 23, it talks about how the director will serve. The director will be appointed by the governor and serve at the pleasure of the board after being approved by the board. And then uh, on page five, 165 line, it just, changes the name of the vocational rehabilitation services to that agency uh, all the rest of the strike throughs and add-ins new language is, is generally what it takes to 
do all the changes, changing code section, changing commissioner of the board, changing department of agents, and that type of stuff. The uh, advocacy groups have been wanting a standalone agency for several, several years. And the best way I can explain to you how this standalone agency has worked, the example would be how EPD is its standalone agency on the DNR, but it's attached to DNR. It has its own budget, its own director, and makes its own decisions on how to spend money. This one will make money, make its own decisions on how to spend money, how to draw down federal money, and it is responsible itself for the job placement, the strategies and the policies that it takes to get this done. Uh, you've had some handouts, uh, and everybody's been asking me, everybody's been asking the governor's office uh, a lot of questions, and we've tried to answer them. And uh, I personally think, along with the advocacy groups, think that this is a good move to uh, allow vocational rehab to be its own boss and spend its money like it wants to spend it and like it sees fit and like the board who is made up, like I said, of uh, people with disabilities uh, sees fit to spend the money. It also allows them the ability to draw down federal money. Uh, if there's anything left on the table, it will be the agency's fault. They can't blame it on anybody else. And there has been some problems with some money left that didn't get spent and went back to the federal government, back to other states. So, Madam, Madam Speaker, without any more from me, I might answer some easy questions if you got any. There are questions. I'll take two or three, but I don't want to keep everybody here all day. All right. Chair recognizes Representative Benton for a question. Gentleman Noel Yield. Yes, sir. I've got a couple of questions for you here. Isn't it true that in the last 10 years under the Department of Labor that Georgia's dropped in rank to 49th in placing people with significant disabilities in, in competitive employment? That would be correct. That we were 19th when uh, Voc Rehab went under the Department of Labor, and we are now a stellar 49th. Uh, yield for a further question? Yes, sir. Isn't it also true that, and I, I, I want to emphasize this, I want you to emphasize it again, the, the makeup of the board, is it not true that over half of the board will be made up of people with disabilities or members of their families? That would be correct. It would be uh, a nine-member board, five of which would have to be made up of persons with disabilities or a family member of a person with disabilities. We yield for a couple more. Yes, sir. Uh, is it also not true that when this bill was heard by the committee, we had over four and a half hours of testimony at, uh, during which everybody that wanted to speak for and against the bill uh, was given that opportunity? Yes, sir, and I appreciate you and your committee handling it like that. Nobody, it all, nobody can say that they didn't have opportunity. It's also of not true it. that uh, out of all those people that, that spoke, in the beginning the majority of people were opposed to the legislation, but in uh, on this recent legislation that all but one of the groups was very supportive of the legislation. And, and that should be a testament to the way you ran the committee and the way the governor's people were uh, willing to go back and fix some of the concerns that were voiced at the first meeting. And that's why this bill is not exactly the same as the original bill, uh, because we did pay attention to what people said they wanted. Chair recognizes Representative Hextile for a question. Thank you very, very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, does the gentleman yield? If you nice to him. I'm going to be very nice to you, sir, even though I don't like you very much, but I'm going to be nice to you. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it true, sir, that when this bill first started, you introduced this bill, there was a lot of controversy, and isn't it also true that we had an overwhelming number of pe persons with disabilities come down and address the committee about their concern and the diminishing services in which they receive under the Department of Labor? Uh, yes, sir. No, thank you and not. isn't it also true that I can reluctantly say I thank our Governor Nathan Deal for seeing and hearing people with disabilities 
and deciding to not transfer the, 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 the uh, commitment uh, of, of uh, need of these disabled persons, but to start a completely separate department which can still address those needs? I, I, I hope you wouldn't even tell him thank you re reluctantly. Well, let me just say I do thank the governor for doing that. And let me also say that when, when uh, persons with disability, isn't it true, came to our committee, it was very, very heart-wrenching and very touching to see so many people that were concerned to make sure they received the adequate quick care that they deserve in this state. And isn't it true, I also want to thank my chairman because a number of people from my district came in tears crying because they were concerned about the transfer of, uh, of the, 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 uh, the services from one committee to another one. And not committed to another, from one agency to another. And, so and I want to thank you very, very much for that. And this stand alone is a direct result of that. Well, I certainly appreciate it. I've gotten an overwhelming number of, of calls and emails from my, my constituents saying they appreciate what we did in the committee, and I appreciate you and the governor. Thank you. Chair rec recognizes Representative Drenner for a question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I do like you. Even though Representative Hextall doesn't, I do like you, Mr. Chairman. You count more. Uh, thank you. I, my, my question, though, I, I also received a great deal of emails with regard to this bill, and uh, their objection seemed to be moving it out of the Department of Labor, and I, I just would ask that you would address that again, if you would not mind, for my clarification. As far as the reasons of moving it? Yes. The reasons that I understand that we're moving it is uh, for years the uh, the uh, advocacy groups for people with disabilities have wanted their standalone agency to be able to control the money in and the money out. Uh, there was some money, several million dollars, that was left on the table that Georgia lost and it went back to other states. This was federal money that had been drawn down. There was some money that was left that did not that we appropriated that did not draw down federal money to be used for for job placement in persons with disabilities and uh one outstanding reason i think if you will look back uh it was 2001 roughly when uh it, it moved into the department of labor we were 19th in placing uh people with significant disabilities uh, now we are 49th in placing people with significant disabilities, which is one of the specific areas that the federal government looks at when it, when it allows money to come to Georgia. Madam Chairman, unless you've got a whole lot more questions, I understand what time it is, and I understand there's committee meetings that's got to be done this afternoon. Uh, this bill did pass out of health, I mean, human relations and aging with not a dissenting vote, and uh, I would uh, appreciate y'all voting green, and if you don't understand how to vote, look up there by my call and you'll punch that color, and I'd appreciate it. Thank you, ma'am. Gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote yes. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas were 140, the nays were 16. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 456. House Bill 456 by Representative Byrd of the 20th, 
A bill to be entitled Act Bill Title 50 relating to the organization of the executive branch generally so as to establish the Georgia Government Accountability Act by title legislative intent to create the Legislative Sunset Advisory Committee to authorize the committee to review and evaluate state agencies' productivity, efficiency, responsiveness, provide for automatic abolition, certain state agencies' contingent upon adoption of a resolution by the General Assembly claiming that the state laws applicable to that agency have been repealed. Bill has been before the House Committee on Budget and Fiscal Affairs Oversight. The committee recommends this bill do pass by way of a substitute, and the bill is being read for the third time. Chair recognizes Chairman Martin, the chairman of the committee from which the bill came, Budget and Fiscal Affairs, to present the bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you today House Bill 456. This is uh, known as the Georgia Government uh, Accountability Act. This bill came uh, before this body and passed last year, Senate Bill 223. I'm presenting this for the author today because we, as we moved forward, if you recall last year, we had language in that bill to merge the House and Senate Budget Office, which our friends across the hall did not take kindly to. Um, they didn't want that to be the first uh, um, group that we would call, call into account. So we have uh, worked with them on a conference committee report, which was signed, but uh, it didn't take effect immediately. So what I bring to you today is House Bill 456, that is that conference committee report with some minor changes uh, to Senate Bill 223. Uh, basically, we're acknowledging that uh, we would include the governor's office in this Government Accountability Act by including a four floor leader from the House and the Senate, and we would work in cooperation with the governor. This bill does not include, as 223 did, Senate Bill 223 did, a merger of the House and uh, Senate Budget Office, and instead has all of the original language from Senate Bill 223. Uh, Madam Speaker, if there are no questions, I would ask um, the House favorable consideration. We do have questions. I will take them, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Taylor to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Absolutely. So this would be 14 legislators? Uh, yes, sir. Seven Is from the House, seven from the Senate. And there's no provision for minority members to be appointed? There, there's a provision for the House Speaker and the President of the Senate to um, choose the members. There is a provision to include a governor's floor leader. There's not a provision um, for a min minority member or a prohibition there, too. And just on the question on the process, if the gentleman will further yield. Uh, so this would, the special committee would receive the report and then have six months after they receive it to come with a series of recommendations outlined in the... They, they, would rec they would receive the report, make the recommendation, but if the gentleman would refer to um, page three of the bill in, in lines uh, somewhere between 63 and 65, that uh, no agency shall be abolished unless and until the General Assembly finds by, joint, by adoption of joint resolution that state laws of the agency are responsible for implementing and enforcing. In other words, this would be a recommending body. Uh, any abolishment would have to come back before this uh, House and the Senate by joint resolution to be approved. I guess my question or concern would be if they receive the port report and you know we're in session essentially four months out of the year and we're kind of focused on our legislative duties I'm, I, I'm not sure if this committee would have the time it would take to review large agencies if we're in session and they receive a report and the due date is within the time that we're in session so that would be my concern if the gentleman wanted to opine on that. And then my other question would be, how many, about how many days do you think this committee would need to meet to review one particular agency? I'm just curious, um, because I didn't see a provision on per diem days or expenses, uh, if that's just unlimited for this committee or if, if that's been limited as well. Uh, the, to answer the gentleman's question, there, there's not a prescribed number of days. I think, uh, as the gentleman knows, committees of this House may meet in the interim as the chair sees fit in order to conduct the business of the people of Georgia, both the House and the Senate committees. Uh, we would hope that all members and chair people in this House, with regard to their own per diem days, their committee of one days, or days as assigned to this group, would use those judiciously in the, to affect the business of the people of Georgia and, and focus on saving the people of Georgia money. Mr. Speaker, if there are no further questions, I'd yield You do one. have further questions. I will take one more. Chair recognizes the, uh, the whip of the Minority Caucus, Representative Hughley, to your left for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the gentleman yield? Absolutely. 
Uh, did you speak to the staffing of this committee? How are we going to staff it and what kind of budget is it going to have? The, the, it's contemplated on lines 41 uh, through 43 that in cooperation with the governor, um, this, the House and Senate representatives will employ staff to work with the uh, chairpersons. Uh, I, it is not spoken directly, but there's not additional budget monies um, representative to hire staff for this committee so it would work within the current budget I suspect the committee would work with members of the staff of the governor's office of uh, planning and budget state um, house and state senate uh, budget offices to affect the work of this committee does the gentleman further yield certainly are these employees going to be independent professionals such that the recommendations that we get back will be based on uh, professional expertise uh, so that the advice that they will be given to our committee members, because our committee members are part-time legislators, and of course we don't have the time to do the type of investigative work that would be required. So are you anticipating a staff of professionals in addition to what we already have to, to do this? I'm, I'm anticipating that we would continue to do business in the state as we currently do and hire professionals in, in the areas that are necessary and is prescribed in line, starting on lines 97 and continuing through um, 142 of the bill is, is a, a fairly detailed outline of the information that the report would include. So I would hope that the chairpersons uh, of, from the House and the Senate would work with the governor's office as the bill states to employ staff in order to create the report necessary as required by this act should it pass. Mr. Speaker, this bill is uh, passed in it, it, its uh, relatively same form as Senate Bill 223 last year. I would uh, respectfully ask at this time for the House to move forward on HB 456 favorably so that we can get about the business of saving the taxpayers of Georgia money. That I yield the well. You have no further questions. The gentleman has yielded the well. <clears throat> is there any objection to the previous question? being ordered. The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 456 will vote aye. All those opposed will vote no. And the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 456. The ayes are 108, the nays are 50. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. If you have an announcement, if you have an announcement, you need to sign up with the messenger now. We're going to do the ones that are signed up, and then I'm going to recognize the leader for a motion. I know we got a lot of committees, I think, that are meeting this afternoon. And we've got a long, busy day tomorrow. Page photographs will be taken at the rostrum immediately upon recess or adjournment.
chair recognizes uh, Chairman Roberts for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Transportation Committee will meet at 245, 245 in room 506 of the CLOB. Chair recognizes Chairman Richard Smith for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Insurance Committee will meet tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock prompt. 8 o'clock. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Chanel for an announcement. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Ways and Means Committee will meet today at 3 o'clock in 606 CLOB. We have a very long agenda. Uh, and just a reminder of uh, the rules of the committee, uh, the author of the bill or his or her designee has to be there to present the bill. Chair recognizes Chairman Willard for an announcement. Hey, Mr. Speaker, the uh, House Judiciary Committee will begin meeting at 2.30 after adjournment. Thank you. 2.30. Need to have everyone there. We've got a long, long list of bills to be considered. Chair recognizes Chairman Burns for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Game Fishing Parks will meet at 2.30 in room 515 in CLOB. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Pruitt for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, children and youth will meet in 402 immediately upon adjournment. <laughs> Chair. Chair recognizes Chairman Smith for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the House. I will go ahead and make an announcement for a subcommittee meeting chaired by Buddy Harden. It's House Bill 1064 tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock in room 403. There is the potential of a meeting at 930 in room 403 to be determined for the full committee, Natural Resources Full Committee. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Golick for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Judiciary Non Civil will meet upon adjournment in room 415 of the LOB. 415 of the LOB in, uh, upon adjournment. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Hamilton for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The full Governmental Affairs Committee will, instead of meeting at 3 o'clock, we'll meet at 315 in 403 Capitol. In the 403 Capitol, 315. Thank you.
Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Rogers for an announcement. The Higher Ed Committee that was meeting at 3 o'clock today will be canceled. No meeting at 3 o'clock for Higher Ed. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Rice for an announcement. Listen up the House Motor Vehicles Committee. Meet right off the floor in the ante room. Immediately, immediately upon adjournment, consider one bill. House Motor Vehicles, ante room. Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Hamilton for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Because of the time overlap, we're going to move ours back to 3.30. 3.30 in room 403 for governmental affairs. Thank you. Chair, recognize Representative Harbin for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I need the members of the Sales and Use Tax Subcommittee of Ways and Means to meet me in the ante room for a quick vote prior to our full committee today. Sales and Use Tax Subcommittee in the ante room immediately. Thank you. Getting a little loud. We've still got a, another announcement or two. I always um, tried to listen when the Rules Committee chairman made an announcement. Chair recognizes the chairman of the Rules Committee, Chairman Meadows, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There will not be a Rules Committee meeting in the morning. There will not be. It will be Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Thursday morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you. Sounds like we're going to be working Thursday around here. Chair recognizes Chairman Martin for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The uh, energy, I'm sorry, the telecom uh, subcommittee of energy, uh, public utilities, and telecommunications will meet, meet immediately upon adjournment in the room as previously described. The meeting was originally at 1.30. We will meet uh, immediately upon adjournment. That completes the announcements. What purpose does the chairman of the Rules Committee rise? Mr. Speaker, I'd like to waive the rules. You making a motion? Uh, making a motion to waive the rules and introduce the bill for the first time. Clerk will read the caption. <laughs> bill by Representative Meadows the fifth. Bill will be entitled Act Bill Title 19 relating to general provisions for parent and child relationships generally so as to modify provisions relating to grandparent visitation rights. On the motion of the chairman that the rules of this house be temporarily suspended to allow a bill to be uh, read for the first time and assigned to committee. Is there objection? Chair hears none. It is so ordered. Judiciary. Page photographs, get with your pages up here at the podium. For what purpose does the majority leader of the House rise? Mr. Speaker, I move this House now stand in recess until 5 p.m. today, at which time we shall adjourn until 10 a.m. tomorrow, February 29th, 2012. We're going to be here on leap day, huh? On the motion of the majority leader that this house be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today, at which time we would be adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. on leap day, February the 29th. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. All opposed, say no. The ayes clearly have it. This house will be in recess until 5 o'clock p.m. today and will then be adjourned until 10 o'clock a.m. tomorrow morning.